Hello and welcome to this tutorial. I am going to make an SEO analyzer web app using Streamlit. So if you haven't watched my previous tutorials on how to analyze the SEO of a website using Python, please do. I've also shared the source code on my website, pythonology.eu. Now let's see how this one works. So I'm going to uh, find an article from my own website. For example, 10 great web scraping ideas for beginners, or yeah, let's go with this one, top four Python web frameworks. So here is an example of all. And if you haven't subscribed to my uh, newsletter, please do. You will find great Python tips once a week and that's it. So I'm going to copy this URL and paste it in here and press enter. Let's see what I get. I get the keywords of my web page. That is web has been repeated 37 times, Python 21, frameworks 19, great. Ngrams, or in this case, bigrams, that is words that co-occur, two words next to each other. So web framework has been repeated 12 times, perfect, because it, it is also here inside the URL slug. So then you have web application, good, Python web, okay. The good things about this web page, title exists, description, meta description, headings are all there, perfect. And there is no special things about warnings, let's say. And the, the way this uh, uh, SEO analyzer works is just based on some simple criteria. That is an H1 should be present or some other headings. Uh, all the images should have an alt attribute and um, there should be a meta description and the website should have a title. So these are the criteria that uh, I'm using here. Okay, now to grab the code and start coding, let's go back to uh, here and let's find the code for the SEO analyzer that I previously wrote, but this is not with a streamlet in mind. So this was only for console. Now let's just copy all this, all of it, and go to your editor. I'm using PyCharm. So I'm going to delete everything here, paste it in all here, and down here as well, I'm going to stop the server. All right, so let's see what we need to do. So we have all these. We need to pip install requests in your terminal, pip install beautiful soup four, pip install NLTK, and we need something else from NLTK, NLTK.util, util, and we are going to import ngrams. So what are ngrams, which is bigrams, trigrams, so n is just a number. Now, for example, let's say we have this um, piece of text and Python, tutorial is something like that. So the way ngrams works is that it n, for example, is one, it means it's just like tokens, this is Python. Bigrams means every two words next to each other, like this is, is one bigram. Is Python another bigram? Python tutorial, another bigram. And tutorial, another bigram. Why is it useful? Because we want to know which of these two words next, next to each other have been repeated more often. And in Mike, in this case, we have Python tutorial repeated twice. So this is good for SEO. If you have relevant bigrams or maybe trigrams, not just single words, people look for, I don't know, Python tutorial for beginners, for example, on a search engine. So you should make sure that you have these. Okay, so this is like ngrams. Now, we need to also import streamlit and give it a nickname as st. So we refer to a streamlit as st from now on. And we're gonna use a streamlit for building up that web app. No need to code um, HTML or CSS or all that. Okay, now that we have this, let's go right here and I'm going to give my app a title. I also have a Streamlit tutorial, but a lot of them actually. You can uh, just search 
my YouTube channel and you will find a Streamly tutorial. So I'm gonna give this app a, a title of SEO Analyzer. And next, let's have an input field so that we get the user's URL. And I'm gonna save that inside a URL variable. So that would be st.text, oops, underscore input. So it takes, it takes the user's input and saves it inside URL. Let's give it a label of enter URL. And that's it. So I'm gonna save this control S and for it to run down below in the terminal, I'm gonna start streamlit run and the name of my file, which is main.py. So it's gonna start a server and this is what we get. Perfect, we have a title, we have a label and the text input. And there's something wrong here. No worries, we're gonna fix that now. So after that, we have our function, SEO analysis, which takes uh, one parameter, URL, and everything inside the function, the body should be indented, as you can see. And if I go down below, you see that this is not indented, it should be. So one tab here as well, and this for loop as well, and this if statement as well. And that should be it. If I control S and go back, you see always rerun. I can say always rerun. So whenever I save my code, you will see the changes here. And now everything is good and there is no error. Great. So let's go up there again and see what happens. Now, when the function um, starts, we have these, everything is good. And the response code, that is we sent a request, we make a request, and if that request, the, res the status code is not 200, that is the page is not available, so let's print something on the web page. Let's print an error like this. So we are going to send an uh, error message that, hey, error, unable to access the website, return, and then the function is out. Otherwise, we'll continue. Uh, to get, uh, grab the title and everything that we did before, it's all fine. And we don't need to do anything up to this point here. So now here, if you remember, uh, we have extracted all the words in the body, that is all the article, and we lowercase them in a list. And that list is called words. So we have tokenized everything using NLTK. Perfect. Now what we need to do is to find the bigrams in that list, those words that occur together, and how often. So let's save them inside a by underscore grams is equal to. We use the ngrams as a function, ngrams, and it takes two parameters. One is these words as a list, which is like tokens. And since it's a bigram, we use the word two. If you want three words in a row, use three. So now we have these bigrams. Perfect. When I'm, and where am I going to display them? Well, let's have a comment first here. Uh, extract the bigrams from the words or tokens actually. Yeah, the same. Okay, so now we have these bigrams. Perfect. I'm gonna save this now. Let's go down, I'm not gonna do anything else here. And oh, and the bigrams we get, there are a lot of them, right? So for example, put the is one bigram, the tokens another bigram. I don't care about all, I want the most frequent ones. So let's just copy this frequency thing and go up there, here, paste it. And let's say FRQ of bigrams. And here, let's just change this as well. And it's not from new word, it's from the n-grams. Where is the n-grams? Oh, bigrams, yeah. So I'm going to check the frequency of the bigrams and how many of them are the most common 10. Well, I mean the 10 most common one of them, I'm gonna grab and put inside, put inside, oops, I buy, underscore grams, underscore FREQ frequency. Okay, so this contains the 10 most common bigrams. 
in my text. Great. Now down below, you can see I have printed them on just the console. I don't want that. You can see the good, the bad and all. So what I want is to print them on the web page. How do I do that in Streamlit? Well, in Streamlit, I can define some tabs. So tab one, tab two, tab three, and tab four. And this is the way you, you create tabs, st.tabs. And you give the list of these headings for each tab that you will see on the web page. The first one, let's have the keywords. For the second one, we're gonna have the bigrams, so bigrams. The third one, we're gonna have um, the good. And the, th the last one, we're gonna have the warnings or the bad. Maybe bad is not a good word, but just bad. Now, how do we put things inside these tabs like these? So, we use the with statement, I would say with tab one, st.write, I'm gonna write the keywords, right? just like that. And let's just copy this and paste it down below once, twice, three times. Okay, so now we have four. So let's say, now with two, with tab two, instead of keywords, I'm gonna have the bigrams frequency. And in tab three, instead of the keywords, I'm gonna have the good. So let's give the good news first. And then tab four, I'm gonna have the bad. And I'm gonna get rid of these. Now let's save this, control S, and go back to our web app to see what happens. So for now, I haven't pasted an URL. So this, is, this function is running based on this URL, right? but I want what the user enters to be inserted here. And what was that? It was URL, variable. So I'm calling the function, all this, and I'm passing in the URL that the user enters. And the user enters what? Whatever they enter is, is saved inside the URL. Okay, so let's go back now. And you can see that it says, yeah, there is no URL yet. So I'm gonna do what I'm gonna do. I'm going to go just grab one of these. For example, what is syntax? And let's just pass it in. Which one was that? Yeah, let's just pass it in here, press enter, and look what happens. So keywords, we have syntax 24 times, language 16, linguistics 14, and the bigrams. We have this and and 12 times, this, syntax in and how. So you can see these are my bigrams. The good, the bad doesn't exist. Okay, perfect for now, but it doesn't look good. So I'm going to loop through these and print out each one by one. So let's go back and uh, down below, right here, instead of printing out all the keywords, I'm gonna say for i in keywords, st dot, let's say maybe text, and i. So it's gonna print every single element there. Let's do the same with uh, the key, this one, and it's going to be bigrams. Let's do the same with the good, and it's going to be good. Let's do the same with bad, and it's going to be, oops, bad. Let's save this and go back. And you can see much better syntax, language, linguistics, sentence, bigrams. We have these not very nice bigrams, although I have all these punctuation stuff. Anyways, the good title exists and all that, and the bad, nothing. So if you want this good thing to be all in green, what you can do, you can, instead of um, sc.text, you can have something like success. And you see now it changes. So if I check the some other articles like, I don't know, maybe Thony, let's see this one, how this one works, and press enter, and you can see keywords, Thony, Python, 
Bygrams Python IDE for beginners. Okay, best Python, funny, funny. That is perfect. Everything looks good. So this is what we uh, built. I don't know in how many minutes, but uh, I hope you liked it. If you did, please press the like button and also go to my website, try to subscribe to this newsletter. You will receive great articles with the source code, by the way. And if you want the source code of this project, subscribe. I will send it by the end of the week to you. Thank you very much for watching and listening.